from the Foundation Studio right here on Biloxi's Back Bay. Welcome to Super Talk Outdoors, where, where as you know by now, we celebrate Mississippi's outdoors every single Monday at lunchtime. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is the capital of the outdoors in America, and I say that every single week here on Super Talk Outdoors. I want to thank you for joining us on the powerful Super Talk Mississippi Radio Network or on Super Talk TV at Seaspire TV. But if you're listening on Facebook or YouTube, your favorite podcast is July the 18th, 2022. I won't say how fast this year is going by, but. <laughs> I just said it. It's amazing how fast time is flying by. Hey, I've, uh, I mention every week that the foundation is a major sponsor of Super Talk Outdoors. Its official name is the Foundation for Mississippi Wildlife Fisheries and Parks. It's not to be confused with the department, Mississippi Department for Wildlife Fisheries and Parks. The foundation was actually formed many years ago. Uh, to help the department with this conservation effort. So it raises a lot of money, a ton of money over the years to help the department fill gaps in areas where they can help. It might be outdoor education. It might be youth programs. There's so many different ways that the, that the uh, foundation has helped the department. Uh, they've also actually done uh, uh, other conservation efforts outside the departments over the years. And as you may remember last year, they were super engaged in an issue, the, the Conservation Trust Fund, that we talked about a lot here on this show. Just They, they were the driving force behind uh, the Conservation Trust Fund. Um, you know, the Trust Fund, by the way, is making really good progress. Uh, we're going to be talking more about it in the coming weeks because the governor and lieutenant governor are in the process of making a appointments to the board of trustees that will oversee the funds uh they're they're actually you know mo moving along quite well and so far so good with that effort they're doing a really really good job with the apartments you know the group has to be smart successful conservation oriented people who are there to help us make sure that we come out of the box on this thing. I mean, really hitting the ground running. We've got to maximize not only the conservation impact, but the amount of federal dollars that's going to be spent. There's so many federal matching funds available to us, and we're going to be, you know, we, now that we have this fund, we're going to be able to go get those the, those dollars. I'm super excited about it. It's something I've talked a lot about here on Super Talk Outdoors and on my show, Coast View, here on the coast. Um, it's going to really be a game changer for, for Mr. Mississippi's conservation efforts, and we are really, really lucky to have the foundation and its incredible board of volunteer leaders uh, focused on issues like that. And um, I'm, in the future, I'm sure they'll be focused on other issues. They they're going to be picky about the issues they get on to, but if they get on an issue, you better join with them if you enjoy conservation, because uh, they're a force to be re reckoned with. That is for sure. Uh, hey, the fishing here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast is really incredible right now. You know, we've had long stretches of just moderate amounts of rain, which is normal for the summer, uh, compared to last year where it rained almost the entire summer. Offshore and backwater fishing here is the best it's been in a pretty good long time. You may remember that I, a couple of weeks ago I had my friend Terry Waldrop on, and he gave me a report. He went out uh, about a week or so ago, and the red minnows this time of year get all bunched up off the barrier islands and you see you know jacks and redfish and sharks and and occasionally you see tarpon and he said that the number of tarpon that he saw was the most he had ever seen and look terry and i've been fishing off the coast of mississippi for more than 40 years many of them in the over you know in the around 200 pound range think about that tarpon fishery has really come back off coast of mississippi when you think of mississippi you don't you don't think of tarpon but they're there, and it was just a great, really, really good report. My son, my, my son Jordan, who I refer to as the fish whisperer, caught a triple tail yesterday with his friend uh, John McMahon. There were nearly 15 pounds. It was his personal best. They released some. They released some uh, some cobia as well. Caught some mangrove. Uh, they had a really good trip, and it was a low impact trip. You know, you don't have to go far offshore to have some really good fishing this time of year. Although, you know, it would it's not unusual for us to do 200 miles in one day. Um, and we cover a lot of ground and see some amazing fish. I, I like to find weed lines and that have a bunch of riffraff and other stuff in them so we can catch some uh, uh, mahi-mahi. To me, that's a lot of fun. Find a good weed line. You can get some cobe and triple tail and dolphin all on the same, you know, all on the same deal. And on a calm day, you can just kill the motors on the boat and just float with it and 
can, it can be so much fun. I like low key trips like that. That's a lot of fun. Hey, today we're going to spend the entire hour with uh, my friends Jordan Blissett and Lake Pickle. Uh, you know them from the Primos Hunting uh, Team. Uh, they're going to be sharing the latest in their worlds these days, and we're just going to talk about Mississippi's outdoors. So, without any further ado, let's sh shift over to my friends Lake and Jordan. How you guys doing? I'm um, doing good. Yeah. Good. After all that <laughs> about triple tail and redfish and mahi mahi i don't really want to talk much about hunting but i suppose you can <laughs> I, know, I know you you guys like to fish and and uh and i've mentioned to both of you that, that i'll have you both down and we'll take you out and let you let you experience some of what i just mentioned but you know we are we are so lucky to live where we live and i, I say this i may have said it when we visited before um, a few months ago, but this is the capital outdoors. I mean, you're going to find, you might find elk hunting this better. You might find this, this better over there, but when you add it all up and you add it with what we have along the Mississippi Gulf Coast with redfish and specks and other species of fish in the backwaters and offshore, I mean, my goodness, the, the offshore fishing off of Mississippi is just incredible. This is the capital outdoors, isn't it, Jordan? It is. It is. We are I was supposed to go fishing last week, and that little depression that was set in kind of skewed that off. But a uh, cool little story about going down towards where you live at. Me and my wife and uh, my little girl, Brynn, since we couldn't go fishing, we ended up going to the Gulfport Aquarium. And first time there, and that was a pretty good experience. That's a nice setup. Yeah, I've had I had the aquarium folks on the show on my Coach View show last week. For a matter of fact, the Mississippi yeah. Aquarium is a is a jewel, and they're you know they're in the process now of as you saw when you were there building the walk over over, over Highway 90 that will take you into Jones Park. But when you stand on that campus and look out over the Gulfport Harbor and the and the Gulf, man, that's a special view, isn't it, buddy? It, it was cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, didn't really realize it was going to be that nice, honestly, when we went. So. It was a good experience and got to eat at Felix's, I think is what it's called. And yeah, a nice yeah. Day trip down there and it was fun. That, that, that is, that is, that is super, super cool. Listen, we're going to get the latest in your lives. You guys continue to do well professionally and it's exciting to watch you uh, evolve. It happens a lot with the Primos team. You get these guys that come through, young guys like you, and uh, you sort of, you know, find your, your, your career feeding under footing underneath you and you go on to do some amazing things in your lives. But I look forward to getting the latest there. And, uh, and then we're just going to talk about, you know, you know, <laughs> the outdoors, you know. Hey, uh, before we get too far, uh, coming back to you, Lake, it, I mean, we are lucky to live in this amazing state, aren't we, buddy? Very much so. You know, it, it, you you talk about, in hearing you talk about it, we kind of, I guess it's the fact that we live here and we're just surrounded by it all the time. You can almost somewhat take it for granted or lose the sense of what all we have at our fingertips. But, I mean, yeah, man, from freshwater fishing to what you're talking about to turkeys and deer and waterfowl got got everything you, you we, we really do and, and it's it means a lot coming from you guys because you've had the opportunity to fit to to hunt and fish all over the world and particularly all over Missis all over uh, the united states so when i say we're the capital of outdoors in america you, you know you there's a you know, we there's a firm foundation to make such a claim because you've been all over the place hey hey before we get too far jordan i want to c come back over to you you and i were chatting a little bit before the, the show started one of the things that i've enjoyed watching about you is that you have first of all you've lost a lot of weight and you've gone through this personal commitment to being healthy and I want to commend you for that. And it's been an inspiration for a lot of people. You, you've, uh, and it's very interesting to watch you on social media because you've been willing to put it out there, and uh, you know the the trials and tribulations of staying focused on your 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 healthy uh, lifestyle. But um, it's been a hell of a journey. But it's been two years. A lot of people, you know, they'll have this flash in the pan, lose a lot of weight, then gain it all back. But you've really done real well in that area, haven't you? Yeah, well, it's been, uh, I wouldn't say it's been uh, just a smooth sail all the way through. You know, I've had my bad days, good days. That just happens in life. But, yeah, it's been uh, two years this month since I decided to uh, make this change, you know. And uh, health-wise, it's been the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. And uh, the most humbling part of it is doing a commitment and putting it out there and seeing the amount of people that's been impacted by it in a positive way. It uh 
that's truly pretty humbling to see the amount of people that's been impacted. One of the biggest things for me is is my dad. He uh, he struggled with his weight just like I was, you know, just bad habits. They kind of get bred into you in Mississippi and for yeah. the eating goes. And uh, he actually finally made the commitment in his mind, you know, like I, I might can do this too. And uh, he got started about three or four weeks ago and, you know, is on his way down too. And he's so excited every day hearing him call me and tell me, hey, I done lost two more pounds. You know, that's a big deal. <laughs> so uh, I, I can see the change in him. That's the most gratifying part of it, honestly, is just seeing the amount of people that have been able to help. That is, that's really, you know, I've had, I mentioned to you that for since my father passed away in 1979 and 1980, I went on this mission. And when people ask me today, why do I still walk 40, 50 miles a week and work out weights and do all the things I do? I do it because I have two sons that love the outdoors and I wouldn't be able to enjoy the outdoors the way that I enjoy the outdoors if I wasn't in shape. But So thanks for your inspiration. It's certainly an inspiration to me as well. Hey, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Jordan Blissett. Day. the conversation on Mississippi's outdoors. It's Super Talk Outdoors with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. Uh, we are joined today by my friends Jordan Blissett and Lake Pickle. Uh, you know them from the Primo's hunting team. You probably know them from their podcast too. They do, they have a great they a uh, podcast that you can actually go listen to. I, mean, I, I, I can't imagine the amount of content you guys have added up over the years uh it's been been amazing watching that involve i had a i had a, a a history my career was in newspapers and then digital media after that i retired had the opportunity to retire in 2016 but uh but i saw a lot of change in the industry over the years and what i what i came to appreciate about where uh podcasts were taking uh, the, the hunting industry and just about every other segment of society is, you know, giving people choices to be able to en enjoy being part of uh, being part of whatever the discussion is. And I want to commend you guys. You guys, what what uh, what I've noted over the years and certainly over the past year is you guys kind of, you know, you you found your stride. Um, you're both really good storytellers to begin with. And I think people like that. One of the things about podcasts, even this show, for example, is that you can't fake it, man. You cannot fake it. If you fake it, people will figure it out so fast it'll make your head spin. Authenticity is what makes it work. But you guys have made a great team, haven't you, Lake? It's, yeah, it was kind of one of the things that, we didn't really plan it, and I guess it's, it's probably best that way because if some of the things about the way the podcast turned out, if we would have tried to plan it, it wouldn't have happened as organically as it did. But then it was just like going to like the storytelling things, and when you do because when you do a podcast, I don't think the podcast is such long form conversation like like you and I are doing right now. You can only, if you are fake, it's like you can only keep that up for so long because you can't, it would be exhausting to try to put something on. So I remember one of the funniest, like, or biggest reactions we got, and this was earlier on, but we were, we were just doing a podcast about, like, so we somehow we ended up telling stories about hunting when we were, like, young. You know, some of our earliest hunting memories before we could drive or anything like that. And Jordan just just comes out with this story about him and a childhood buddy getting in an argument at deer camp. They end up wrestling and the, the kid bites Jordan in the chest or something. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know this story. Like I wasn't this priest friend. So he's telling me this story and I just go to cackling laughing. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just stuff like that, that, that people tend to like cling to, you know, we had another story where we, uh, we're talking about we we got we were driving from Kansas to Pennsylvania, and uh, we we stopped at a Red Lobster because it was the only thing open, and we ended up with these Red Lobster biscuits. And Jordan shoved a bunch of them. This is pre weight loss, Jordan. By the way, You're right, right. A bunch of these biscuits into a napkin, and I found him eating them the next day as we were driving. And so people started like. People started, we, we started saying Red Lobster Biscuits. We just started saying RLB. And people started sending us messages or, or they would post a picture and they would tag us and they would hashtag RLB. It was it just stuff like that that you didn't plan on just kind yeah. of became a thing and it, it made it fun. 
Well, I, you know, just okay, the, I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy long form, form radio like we're doing today. You know, you know, the opportunity to just speak from the heart and from the soul about our love of the outdoors. And, and you know, to be honest with you, man, I think back at some of the f- funnest times I've had at deer camp. And, and this is every year. It's, you know, it's the darndest things will, will, will make you fall into a, on the floor, can't catch your breath type of laughing. I mean, it's fun. I mean, we, it, we just, I'd, we don't have a lot of conflict. We just have a lot of laughing. And that's what makes wor- the world go around. And I think that's one of the reasons people enjoy this show is that you never know where the show is going to take you. You know, you just never know. You know, Jordan, you've, you've yeah. had some fun experiences doing that show, haven't you? Man, yeah, we've had a blast, and uh, you know, late came to cot. We were when we were hunting cottonmouth like six years ago. He's like, I'm gonna start a podcast. I was like, What? I didn't know what it was, and honestly, I didn't want anything to do with it because I was like, I just whatever. I was like, I don't know what he's wanting to do, but it uh, after three or four episodes, I realized, hey, this this gonna be pretty fun, you know, and took a while to get off the ground, but it's uh, it's been a real fun experience for sure. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And what, what I like about the podcast platform is it gives you the opportunity to touch a lot of people you would not have otherwise touched. And once people get hooked, they want to they want to get more. And again, you guys have done a great job with your storytelling over the years. That That's for sure. You're coming out of a, you know, you, this is kind of a lull in the action for you from your, from your Primo's work. But looking back on last year, it was a lot of fun for you guys, wasn't it? Blake? Yeah, yeah, it, it was a... It was a, it was a, the, the year had, I mean, just like any other year, there was a lot of different aspects to it. Um, Kudzu Bluff was, we saw, I would say, dramatic improvements from the first year we were there. Um, and it just, again, just kind of something that happens organically. You don't just figure out a property real quick. It takes time. And so uh, that was encouraging. Um, turkey season went well. Uh, it was a, it was a long season. It was a, it was a different season here in Mississippi, but, it ended up on the on the right end of things. So yeah, when you kind of, I guess the way we look at it, we look at it elk season, deer season, what waterfowl hunting we can do, and then turkey season. If you kind of put all that in one year, it was a, I mean, it all has its ups and downs as they always do, but it was a fun year for sure as always. Kudzu Bluff, um, for people who watch the show know about Kudzu Bluff right there on the edge of the Delta near, near Shula. Yeah, if because we actually have I lease a farm in Shula as well, and it you're right, it takes time, it takes time, and you, you know what? It's uh, almost unfair to go into a place like Kudzu Bluff or any other place after you've hunted Cottonmouth the way you guys have hunted pot, Cottonmouth over the years. But what I've came to understand, and what I've come to understand, and what I what my experience has been, and the farms that I've leased has been that it does take time and you know someone hunted it before you they had different standards you got you guys are bringing cottonmouth standards to kudzu bluff and uh you know in two or three years you can literally change the entire landscape as it relates to the the kind of mature deer you see and it's exciting after one year to see what you guys experience isn't it jordan it is well i mean that first year man it was a struggle trying to figure out i think we talked about this last time we were on here the wind currents and the hills and all that kind of stuff it, they it's uh it's a double-edged sword trying to hunt the hills but uh i like it was pretty crazy i mean we learned so much the first year for our food plot strategies deer stands where they should be placed how to hunt them and all this kind of stuff where last year we had those mental notes and actually took real notes down the first year like what we needed to change to the year after and Man, it made a huge difference. I mean, it was like night and day for the first three, two months of season. Well, in a way, I think it's actually, it actually, first of all, it teaches you more. You know, you learn a lot more when you have to go to a new place. You can get spoiled hunting it somewhere like Cottonmouth and some of the other places that you guys have been to. And what you were experiencing was more the real life experience of most hunters. You know, the, most hunters are having to go work with uh, the thermals and all that as it relates to the hills. And most hunters are having to go, you know, find new ground and, and figure it out. They're doing, they're doing public land and they're having to go deep into public land to find where their little you know killer situation is going to be um so it, it made you better hunters didn't it like at the end of the day it made you it made me a better hunter it made me in kind of kind of what you mentioned earlier whether you realize it or not you know us hunting cotton mouth pretty much exclusively for 
six seasons or seven seasons, some some one of those. Um, more or less, you without realizing, you kind of get yourself into a rut because you hunt a place exclusively that long. You don't. I'm not saying you, we knew everything. Like we still made mistakes at Cottonmouth, sure, but we could fall into a rhythm at Cottonmouth so quickly. You know, we really just kind of knew what was going on. Where all of a sudden you shoved into a place like Kudzu Bluff, like okay, I have to, I gotta dig myself out of here. You got to start over and start figuring some things that you already knew. You got to freshen yourself up on some things that you're not relative to at all. Like hunting, I've hunted, I've deer hunted in places with topography, but not in this state. You know, not in the hills like that. So that was new. That was something to to kind of wrap our heads around and um, kind of. I mean to make no bones about it like just like what you said it's definitely more along the lines of reality for what the what the average deer hunter in this state faces and to look at it that way it was like okay let's this is this is a good thing you know it's a more relatable story well we're going we're going we're going on our 6 year of of having uh leased land in the Mississippi Delta and if you had told me when we started that we would have 160 inch deer on camera and this past year we killed two deer that were near 150 inches i mean 148-ish in some change a beautiful awesome. mature deer if you'd have told me when we first started we'd see deer like that i, I would have said there's no way but it, it just it, because there's a lot of competition and I, as i've learned on this show you've got resident deer that that um that are pretty much going to stay close by. You've got some that are going to visit the agricultural land that's near us and then wander back with, you know, some maybe a mile away. And some will go a long way away. You may see them at the beginning of the season. You're not going to see them again. Maybe during rut they'll come back, depending on how that situation goes. But the learning process for me has been incredible. And I feel like we have a better feel for it. But as you point out, you never really completely figure it out. Because as new deer arrive, you got to try to figure that guy out, and it's not always easy. That is for sure. Hey, listen, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with uh, Lake Pickle and Jordan Blissett. We'll see you after this break. Drive safely. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. I have my friends Jordan Blissett and Lake Pickle with me, and we're just talking about our love of the outdoors. And during the break, my son Jordan sent me a picture of the blackfish or triple tail that he caught yesterday for the YouTube and Facebook audience. So it, for, for the radio audience, it's a nice fish, trust me. He said that when he hooked it, he hooked it on a live pogey. They had what they were trying to do is they had corks, but they realized that the fish was holding a little bit deeper. So he, he hooked a live pogey toward the tail so that it would try to run, you know, obviously away from the hook. And it ran deep, 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 and then he felt it when it grabbed it. And he said it spent more time out of the water than it spent in the water, which good lord that's that's so much fun. I can't explain to you how much fun that is. It's kind of imagine a fifteen pound bass you know and you know jumping and doing all the things that it does just goes crazy anyway um you know it is it is fun to to just stack up the memories man i mean when you're out in the outdoors and again coming back to your podcast one of the cool things about what it evolved into was a really sort of comfortable telling of your experiences and you've been really fortunate because you know we told your stories before you had these aspirations to be part of the 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 primos team started as camera guys still work as camera guys but you're in front of the camera as well but you know being associated with will and the team has really afforded you some experiences that have literally change your life hasn't it like without a doubt I, I don't think i could ever come well i would never be on this show talking to you if it weren't for primos you know uh, but that could be said about any any of these opportunities that i get if it wasn't for that brand that company um wilbur jimmy brad those guys i it, it just that those guys have done so much for me, Jordan, and a lot of people. So yeah, they, they've, I owe them a lot. And I'm very thankful for them. Well, Will, Will and I have really become good friends as a result of our involvement in that Outdoor Stewart, Stewardship Trust Fund together. And, um, you know, he'll, you know, we, we communicate pretty regularly. 
But man, he is so down to earth and so focused. And I mean, he, you know, he's driven by his faith. He's he's driven by his loyalty to his friends. He loves Mississippi. He he is so committed to conservation. Um, there's no, you know, Will is kind of one of a kind, isn't he, Jordan? Man, he uh, he definitely is the most focused person I've ever been around. And man, just. 100% about it. He's a big reason that I've ever decided to chase any aspirations because, you know, at one point, my if I could ever get to Primo's and work there, I'd be satisfied my entire life, right? And uh, just being around Will and the way he operates and learning what a successful person does, he never quits chasing that next thing, you know? He's never mm -hmm. satisfied. He's always wanting the next per to perfect the next obstacle is coming about or chase this next thing that's on his mind and that just being around people like that it rubs off i mean it 100 percent rubs off on you to be a better person well you um, look at look at jimmy look at brad look at the other guys who come through the primos team and and it seems to be i think a real good a, a real good telling of a man's commitment has been his ability to help people get what they want out of life you know and that, i think zig ziglar once said that if you'll help people get what 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 they want out of life uh, you'll get what you want out of life. And I think that's really worked well for him. He reads a lot, as you well know. Mm -hmm. He reads, you know, he's just driven. I, I say on my show, Coach you a lot, this, 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 this strong belief that I have, and as a publisher, I really live this, but it is that the more we learn, the more we better learn how much we don't know, that life's a journey of discovery and learning. And once you sort of get into that mode, then new goals, new career goals, just, it, you can't help have them roll out. You What? Will helped you do what he helped you both do is realize you are capable of doing more than you ever realized. That's what a that's what a that than you ever realized you were able to accomplish. That's what a good mentor does. A mentor helps you unlock potential within you, and then who knows who knows where you will go. You know. So let's let's kind of shift gears a little bit. Um, you know, that's exactly what he did. So, you know, Lake, what's the latest in your world? Uh, yeah. So, I as of well, very recently, uh, I'm not, I, well, try the best way to articulate this. I'm no longer a full-time Primo's employee. Um, now I'll caveat that very quickly with, I'll still be doing some things with Primo's. Um, don't plan on cutting any ties there. I just kind of, like you said, um, I was afforded, you know, an opportunity, uh, with, um, a company called Onyx Hunt. If you're familiar, if anyone's familiar, like the, the hunting app, it was a, they approached me um, a while back and it was, it, it was immediately, you know, caught my attention because I've used Onyx since 2017 or 2018, really enjoyed it. Um, and it, it was, I'll, I'll make no bones about it. It was a very, very difficult decision because I had a, still do have a deep emotional attachment to Primo's. Um, but going back to immediately going back to Will and what we were just saying about him. So, uh, I had this opportunity laid out in front of me. Um, they, they, had, you know, I guess made the offer, so to speak. And I called Will and I said, Hey, I need to talk to you about something. Can, can I come to your house? And he was like, yeah, for sure. So I drive to Will's house, uh, sit down with him and explain to him what I have going on. And this just tells you the kind of guy he is. This, this is a, if you want a, like, I guess a blueprint for the kind of people you want in your life, this is like Will's that kind of person. So I, I sit down with Will and I tell him what I have going on. So I have this offer from Onyx. Will never even entertained me not accepting that offer. He said, he basically said, Lake, this is way too good of an opportunity for you. You have to take this. Like you, you absolutely have to. Um, and to be honest, like when I first took the job, I didn't know if there was going to be room for me to still do things with Primos. Thankfully there is, so, you know, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not just having to go, okay, bye. Like I'll still be doing things with Primos, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with, uh, Onyx now have been for about a month and a half, maybe two months, but uh, yeah. it's very new, very fun. I'm enjoying it. And yeah, that's kind of what's going on with me right now so hey what real quick before we move over to jordan to see the latest in his world what's what's your role at on x so 
it still in the like a uh, like marketing kind of like I was doing at Primos, um, a lot of social media management, uh, content creation, working with you know just working with their ambassadors and um, and all media related marketing stuff. The world I kind of have already known and grown to like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I, again, you've been opened up to all the possibilities and you, you'd be crazy not to explore them because <clears throat> you're yeah. getting good at it. <clears throat> yeah. So Jordan, let's move over to you. What's the latest in your world? Man, it's similar to Lake. Uh, you know, we talked about me losing weight and stuff and that opened up opportunity to help a lot of other people. And before I knew it, it grew to a, to a situation where I kind of had to make a decision whether I wanted to, you know, make this a full-time career or stick around at Primo's and, I was the same way as Lake. I went to Wilbur about it, and he was like, hey, you've got a lot of potential over here, so go after that. And I um, also got my real estate license, I guess, about a year and a half ago, and I work for a company here in Raymond, Mississippi called Open Season Properties. So I'm uh, I'm doing health coaching, and I'm working at the properties thing, and uh, also still at Primo's, you know, as a part-timer. Um, that was no no bad blood at all there. I owe a lot to Primos and still enjoy doing what we do, you know. And uh, just like this turkey season, I was just fortunate enough to go on several trips with the guys and still doing the same thing we've been doing. But uh, the only difference is it's just not full-time there anymore. But we're still part of the team and uh, plan on being there for a long time, you know, for us. In similar situation as you know how Brad has. He's doing real estate and doing primos, and uh, want to keep trying to grow everything. You know, the primos brand means a lot to me, and uh, I owe it a lot. And I still enjoy doing what I do. And at the same time, these other opportunities came up, and uh, there, there's been a blessing in my life, no doubt. Well, as uh, as I learned, uh, just to, just to sort of um, substantiate what you just said in the conversation, I had Jimmy Primos and Brad Ferris on in the early days of Super Talk Outdoors, and Brad talked about the relationship he had with Primos and how important his real estate business was to him, et cetera. But as as someone who viewed the show, if you didn't know that detail, you wouldn't you wouldn't even know that you wouldn't because Brad was such a omnipresent part of the Primos hunting. Team team still and so passionate to it so you know what what he's discovered and what you guys will discover too you can have both worlds if you're if you're loyal to each world you know and and frankly to be honest with you one world will help the other you know they they, they can peacefully coexist in ways that actually create some synergy that's very positive um, I mean certainly that's true for you Jordan and with as it relates to on X um, I mean that's definitely true for you Lake for sure for sure, it worked out because yeah, Onyx is actually like partners with Primos on you know some sponsorship things. They sponsored the podcast, um, so it, it just kind of it was it it wasn't a hard transition at all. It's yeah, cool. yeah. Well, what we you know what we're observing is this you know two young men growing and uh, and and you know realizing their potential. Who knows? Who knows where this will go? You may be the next Primos before it's over, developing your own hunting line. Who who knows? Who knows? When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Lake Pickle and Jordan Blissett. We'll see you after this break. We live in one of the best places in America to enjoy the outdoors. So let's talk about it. It's Super Talk Outdoors with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. You know, when I was talking with uh, Lake Pickle and Jordan Blissett about this triple tail that my son Jordan caught yesterday, I remembered that behind me here, on one of these rides is a fly that Chris Gertz gave to me. Chris Gertz, uh, who is uh, on the executive committee for the foundation and a longtime friend of mine. Um, this His father, Chris Gertz Sr., who unfortunately passed away in the last couple of years, made this. And it's just a, such a unique fly. And uh, he's tagged more triple tail than any other human being in the Gulf of Mexico. That's that's. That's one of his many claims to fame. But, man, I cherish this uh, this fly that I have, and that's one of the reasons why I have it here behind me, just as sort of a, a memorial to his father who made such a great impact on the, on the fishery. Hey, coming back to uh, Lake and Jordan, 
Lake, I'm following you on social media, man. You bought a house. You got yourself a future bride. You're going to break a lot of hearts soon, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> My mom's maybe. Um, but <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, with the weddings coming up in like two weeks, actually. And act like, so these, this is one of the parts I'm most excited about, about this wedding. So, uh, it's a small ceremony and my brother's girlfriend, I don't know if you can tell what that bow tie is made out of. Those is it, uh, let's see, is it, oh, is that turkey feathers? Turkey feathers, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I uh, got the blessing from my fiance that we could, so myself, <laughs> like it's a small ceremony because we kind of put it together quickly and so, the wedding party, so to speak, on my end is just my brother and Jordan. So we'll be up there in our little turkey feather bow ties. But, yeah, that's coming up quick. <laughs> that That's so cool. Listen, man, when I met my wife, Ann, now, what, 35 years ago, when I met, I used to joke to my friends, I'm going to get married before I turn 30. I got married two weeks before I turned 30. And I've joked with my friends that I, when I can find a woman who can put a cigar a minute on a sea witch, when we're trolling for King Mackerel, I'm going to marry her. And and sure enough, Anne could do that. <laughs> so she still loves the outdoors. So it doesn't surprise you that our, all of our kids love the outdoors. But uh, your wife had to accept the reality of who you were. So that bow tie is is it was an easy thing for her to accept because she knows she knows you, doesn't she? Well, that, and it's funny you bring up the cigar minnow thing. The first time... Um, that she ever went turkey hunting with me. And the first time she had ever gone turkey hunting, we killed a turkey. And I was just like, oh, a sign from above. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And, you know, Jordan, while we're on the subject, man, I watch you with your family and your daughter. I mean, you, you're, a, you're a good man. And you've you defined, as I have, success in life is having your family happy. That's true about you, isn't it? Man, I, I never... I've changed so much since I had brand like far as just my mentality on life. And, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like how that change can be such a positive impact. Uh, by now I'm sure you can relate to this. Like everything I do is based on her future. Like every decision I make, I think well, how is brand going to be impacted from this? And, uh, man, just like we're going back to, you know, doing what we're all doing now and, it's such a huge blessing that I didn't realize that would happen is having the extra time freedom to spend with her and my wife. Like it's, I'm honestly happier now than ever been for us just getting to be at home and sit on the couch with them. You know, it's just a something I didn't think I would necessarily, I knew I would enjoy it, but I didn't know how much I would love that. Well, that's one of the things that's so important about your public life. You know, people will experience through your experiences the trials and tribulations of life. Growing up, you know, starting out as young guys that were really aspiring to be on the Primos team and as camera guys, and then getting in front of the camera and going on to do cool things in your lives. Now, now, Lake, you're getting married, and soon you'll have children, and you know, you you may have more than Bren before it's over with Jordan. But the, but the reality is, people people want to they want to experience. Uh, what you're experiencing. They want to know more about your lives. And, you know, that with that comes a burden. I, I've known this because I've been in public life for most of my adult life, certainly the last uh, 20 years, that people, uh, if, you, if you don't live by example, then uh, you can become a quick target. You know, that's just kind of part of the deal. But there is a burden that comes with public life. And if you have a faith in God and you're, you have your, your values centered, which you had the opportunity to, you're good people coming onto the Primos team, but we'll help sort of solidify that part of you. That gives you the opportunity to be role models. I mean, did you ever think, like, that in, in your wildest imagination that one day you'd be a role model? No. <laughs> Short answer, no, I did not. But it, it's been, and I would be lying if I said I've always handled it perfectly. Um, it, it was a learning curve for sure. But it, on one hand, it's it's so encouraging, and it was always helpful to have guys like Will and Brad that obviously the spotlight on them is much larger and just watch how they've handled it. But even to the degree of like, like I haven't, um, like the transition to OnX, it's just been I don't know, dealing with that and it's having folks that you know look up to you, just it kind of holds you 
uh, st- you know, accountable too. You know. Yeah, it's for, that is for sure. And, and listen, we're out of time, but but Jordan Blissett and Lake Pickle, it's going to be fun to stay in touch with you. We'll get together regularly here on this show just to just to share war stories. But you guys are good guys, and you are role models. And I look forward to watching where you know God takes you. So it's been a pleasure to, to visit with you today. Thank you. Thank you, you bet. Hey, as I always end the show, stay safe in the outdoors. Have a great day.